I think it's true to say that there are three main strands of conclusions we've reached in this review, and some of those um, derive from innovative analytical methods. And I'm sorry that none of the people involved in that could be here today. One of the things that strikes you most about the combined authority area in which um, James leads is that the geography is different from that of other mayors. It includes really in the metro mayor type or for everybody else. But if you start, when we started to unpick this area, we realised that there are in fact three economies, broadly Cambridgeshire and South Cambridgeshire, Peterborough and its environs, and then the and then the Fens. Of course, they've got fuzzy boundaries. But in big picture terms, our view is that these areas have different challenges, and those require different solutions. The second strand we picked up is based on a novel piece of analysis. There's been work in Cambridge over a number of years, which has prompted the conclusion that growth in public sector employment in Cambridge since the financial crisis has been stronger in the south of the country than is suggested by the ONS Bres data. And, that, and for this project, we took this methodology across the whole combined authority area and actually found that this growth was widespread. Now, on one level, of course, this is a bit puzzling, and consequently, we're having ongoing discussions with the ONS about these discrepancies, and it's fair to say that both we and they can see weaknesses in their approach, but the overall conclusion is that this area of combined authority has been pretty fast growing and probably faster growing than the, than the national statistics suggest. <coughs> the third strand is also innovative. It's again derived from established futures work, also led from the university, and that looks at possible future scenarios for the area and models them in the terms of both land use and transportation. It considers then the revealed preferences, sorry about revealed preferences, a great economist term, the location choices which household, households have. And so it's trying to tell us something about welfare, not just about transport patterns. In more purely economic terms, its outputs are about business costs, commuting patterns, and rents. And this approach has been very powerful in the past, challenging and guiding policy in the southern part of the area. And the main conclusion to emerge from this analysis is that if the growth of the combined authority areas continue, particular particularly the area around Cambridge, able to continue attracting internationally leading research-based industry. The transport network is going to require major investment. Now, we're talking about an area of the UK which accounts for just 1.37% of the UK's GBA, but the nature of the business activity that's attractive, international nature, means that this is more important than that, than that figure suggests, and we have suggested strongly it is a nationally important region. It both has a strong entrepreneurship culture of its own and pulls in international businesses. And it sits, of course, where two growth corridors meet. The east-west growth arc, going over to Oxford. You're not really allowed to mention Oxford in Cambridge, but occasionally you can get away with it. <laughs> and also the London's Stansted Cambridge Innovation Corridor. But we can't take the robust growth that's been there recently for granted. Familiar to any business person in this room that high housing costs are an increasing issue for firms seeking to attract workers, and indeed for young people who've grown up in the area and would like to settle there. And the future's work suggested clearly that in the absence of greater ambition for both housing and transport infrastructure, the aim of doubling GBA in the, in the area would not, only, would not be achieved, as employment growth would be forced to tail off by travel constraints and indeed costly housing pushing up business costs. So the recommendations about planning for enough housing and for a major upgrade, carefully prioritised in transport infrastructure, are particularly important. Cambridge, of course, has two key problems in this regard, if one of them is a problem. One, of course, is the green belt, where you have to have very strong reasons um, to, uh, to, to move into the green belt. But the second, and really difficult to resolve, is the last mile issue. The, the narrow streets of the historic centre simply don't lend themselves to a form of mass transport that runs above ground. And that's why we've supported the exploratory work for the Cambridge Metro, however ambitious that will sound to outsiders. We expressed a strong concern in the report for what is built as well as how much. Cambridge already has some good new developments around the edge, and it's got the land value to support good new development. So we could really have some exemplar places. But just as importantly, the income inequalities within Cambridge suggest that we also need innovative forms of affordable housing, and I know that James is particularly keen on this. So if we can get this development done well in the right places, it will not only help people in Cambridge, but it will also enrich the informal networks which 
David tells us all is such an important driver of the entrepreneurial activity we had. Now, I've talked a lot about Cambridge, perhaps too much. I should say we did also get out of Cambridge. Indeed, I, I went up to Wisbech, which I'm afraid I'd never been to before, to realise just how hampered it is by the lack of rail linkage and the evident inadequacies of the A47 to and from Peterborough. It's clear that market towns in that area, and I had this reinforced, I was having lunch today with a number of uh, voluntary groups in the Cambridge area, and they talked about something which I really picked up on in the review, which was buses. Um, people from Ramsey talking about the buses to Huntington being cut, and the challenge that's going to make for people trying to get to employment from Ramsey. 25% of the population of the combined authority area lives in market towns. Connecting those people better with education and employment opportunities is really vital. And we wanted to look beyond the purely economic, the housing, um, the infrastructure, to ways to shape development which consider the well-being of individuals and communities. We were supported particularly by Dame Carol Black, one of the commissioners, who, talk, who, who has helped us with the recommendations about workplace health. We've also suggested that an opportunity area for health be established in the north of the area. Turning to Cambridge, while higher education has a strong reputation in Cambridge with its two very different universities, I should say I used to chair Anglia Ruskin, so it's very dear to my heart. Peterborough, one of the biggest places in the UK without a university, would benefit from a different type of university again, more closely linked to business in the area. And then right across the area, at the other end of education, a better start for children from more deprived areas would be key to unlocking their individual potential. The last part of our recommendations is really important. It concerns governance, and it's good to say this with the minister here. Given the importance of this area, greater fiscal devolution more akin to that given to some other metro mayors would be a very natural step. Because Cambridge is nationally important, doesn't mean it all has to be run from the centre. But equally, if this is going to deliver the most value, the authorities right across the combined authority area need to be able to work smoothly and constructively together. There's up and down. So I'm conscious that this review looks for big changes in plans for the area, and I'm <coughs> very conscious it poses big challenges, and I think big choices. And we've, of course, put this forward in the review, but to some extent, it's a choice for the people of the area, whether they want to go on and, and, and capitalise on the growth they've already had and grow further, or whether they want to revert to perhaps where Cambridge was 50 or 60 years ago and say, no, actually, we don't want to grow anymore. We want to stay a, a small, we want to stay a small, a small place. So ultimately, I, I think it is a choice for people, um, but it's a long-term choice because it's a long-term choice and difficult choices. These are areas where politicians often find it hard to tread, and that's why we're so pleased to have the support of the mayor in putting forward these challenging recommendations. It's been quite a piece of work uh, chairing this review. On some areas I'd like to have delved deeper, particularly perhaps around affordable housing. But I've enjoyed finding parts of the um, combined authority area I haven't previously visited. Although just in passing, I'd like to say I wouldn't like to drive the A47 very often, and I feel very sorry for people who do. Um, just to finish, I'm incredibly grateful to lots of people who've worked on the review, been very generous with their time and comments, many in this room, but there are too many to list. And in any case, I'm sure that you're all very eager now to hear from Greg Clark, the MP for Tunbridge Wells since 2005, and now Secretary of State with a somewhat unpronounceable V's. And perhaps significantly, exactly, they were And um, significantly for today, Greg is of course a Cambridge graduate, but I'm trying not to hold that against him. Yeah.